All right, well, it is four o'clock. So welcome everybody to our webinar here today. So excited that you could join us. Um, my name is John Smith. I am one of the teacher success managers here at Book Creator doing lots of webinars and trainings, but guess what? You're not here to hear me today. You're here to hear Monica and I get to take a break and I'm just gonna sit in the background and let Monica do her thing. And I'm gonna answer any questions that may pop up and things like that. So a little housekeeping business uh, in the chat window. That is a great place to go uh, if you want to mention things that excite you, aha moments, that kind of stuff. But if you have questions, put them into the chat window, or I'm sorry, not put them into the Q&A box. And that kind of helps me uh, organize things because Monica is going to tell you stuff. People are going to get excited and a chat window is going to fly by. And sometimes I might miss questions. Uh, so if you do have a specific question, Put it into the Q&A box and then other than that, everything else you can put into the chat window and we'll just kind of go from there. But I am really excited to hear this one today, Monica. So without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to our good friend, Monica. Monica, tell us who you are, what you do, and let's let's get this going. You bet. Well, thank you so much, John. I am just so excited to be here with you all today for this session on nine creative back to school activities activities. And we are going to talk about some of my favorite ways to kick off the school year using Book Creator to get students to not only become comfortable within an open-ended creation tool, but also building community, sharing a bit about themselves, and really getting set up for success over the course of the year. So I see a lot of you jumping into the chat already. If you can let me know that you can hear me, you can see me, you can see my screen that says nine creative back to school activities, then I will know that we are good to go. I welcome everyone from a lot of different corners of the world today. So excited that you are here to join us. And if you have questions, we're going to carve out some time at the end. We've got our nice 45 minute block. So we'll um, make sure to carve out time at the end today for any questions that you have, but I've got my eyes on the chat. So feel free to add any questions as we are going through today. So as you heard, um, my name is Monica Burns. I'm an ed tech and curriculum consultant, a former New York City public school teacher, still based on the East Coast. And I am a book creator, super fan, and just so pumped to talk to you about some strategies for introducing book creator at the beginning of the school year, getting kids talking and sharing at the beginning of the school year. And if you are following along, if you are on social media, uh, make sure to snap a picture of any of your favorite activities today. You can tag me at class tech tips on Instagram or Twitter. Um, let me know of your, you know, your favorite spot and which activity activity really grabs your attention today. Now, I blog a lot. I share a lot on my podcast. I even have a button on the blog that you can click on to find all things book creator. So as we are talking and sharing today, um, you may want to explore some additional resources. I'm going to drop some links um, at the chat too. So, and yeah, I was in Dallas um, uh, just a few weeks ago, actually, uh, for a special event um, hosted by the folks at uh, Fax Education. So Elevate was the name of that conference just a couple of weeks ago, um, actually. So today, as we talk about using book creator at the start of the school year, I like to think back um, to my experience kicking off the school year, getting kids settled in and ready uh, for the first day of school. I had seven first days of school as a fifth grade teacher with technology, without technology, so that's a lot of different ways to get kids into an environment where they are going to do different types of things over the course of the year. And so today, our big focus with these creative back to school activities is create. And so this is the idea of creating in the classroom and using one of my essentials, ed tech essentials, to really think about the conversation around creativity and what it looks like in the back of and I should say in the back to school season at the start of the school year. So today we are going to go through nine creative back to school activities. If you um, remember, if you joined us right at the top of the hour, you heard John say, 
that you'll be able to access the recording of this. It's up going to be up on YouTube, YouTube Live now. And I'm going to point you to some resources that you might want to check out too as you're getting ready to start off the school year. Now, there's a couple of familiar faces in this uh, selfie uh, from ISTE, the ISTE conference earlier uh, this summer. And as we're thinking today about some back to school activities, I've also um, put together a blog post for the folks at Book Creator for TCE with some of the activities that we're going to talk about today, but we're actually going to add to this list as we go through some of these favorites together. So I'd love to hear from you in the chat. You can let me know are you super familiar with Book Creator? Are you a Book Creator ambassador too? Is this your first time checking out Book Creator? Um, are you curious about it? Kind of where do you fall in that how familiar you are? I see some first timers. Um, oh, yeah, I totally remember uh, running out for the train the afternoon. I was uh, running up to the airport after my session not long after you. Yeah. So I see we got book creator ambassadors, first timers on here today. So no matter where you are with how familiar and comfortable and experienced you are with book creator, you are definitely in the right place today. If you are totally new or just starting to take a look um, at book creator, a quick overview. It is a open-ended tool. So it's a tool you can use essentially as a blank canvas to make interactive eBooks, add images, text, emojis, lots of different things. You'll see today some of the options that we'll explore together, like recording audio and video. I'll point out some of the accessibility features, and it's really great for kids to share what they create with the world. And if you are totally brand new, and if there's a time where I'm moving through a little bit quickly, or you have a question, Question, feel free to put it in the chat. Um, there's lots of great getting started with Book Creator resources on Book Creator's website and YouTube channel. So even if we go through things a little bit quickly today, in terms of all the ins and outs of the tool, there's a lot of places to go to get your questions answered and you and you are in the right place uh, to make that happen today. So today, as we talk about um, setting up kids for success and kicking off the school year, you're going to hear me mention some of the remixable books. I love these for the start of the school year, and I just dropped a link in the chat there for you too. I love these for the start of the school year because it really sets you up for success. It can be a time saver, a great way for you to gather some ideas and also share a structure that you might build in terms of the bookmaking process with your students. So we're going to look at nine of these ideas together. I'm going to pause a few times and bring us out to Book Creator for a live demo. I'm going to encourage you to just jump in and create a book with me if you're feeling called to do so uh, together today so you can get a feel for one of my favorite activities. And I'll share some strategies that you might want to make your own this year. So the very first activity on our list is to set up a digital portfolio. Now, my digital portfolio, this is a great activity for the beginning of the year. And I'm also going to switch windows here so you can just see that you'll be able to find this one in the remixable um, template area. I put that link in the chat. So when you click on this one, you'll be able to see exactly what it looks like in action. You can either preview it, which is what I'll do in a second, or you can remix this book and add it to your library. So this is a great activity to start the school year because it provides an opportunity for kids to set the stage share a little bit about themselves, and also have a place to collect all of their things, all of their accomplishments over the course of the year. So they can start off sharing a little bit about themselves, doing a check-in for how they're feeling at the beginning of the week. And then over the course of the year, maybe you make a routine like every other Friday or the last day of the month, kids can plug in some of their work from the school year. It might be a combination of screenshots or things they embed from different places. It might even be a collection of books that they make. So a lot of options here as you are thinking about some of these pieces that you can explore. So to get here, I went to that remixable um, books link that I just dropped in the chat. Um, let me see. I think I put it in the, here it goes for everyone. There we go. Sometimes I forget to put the links in the 
for, for everyone, not just for us hosts here. So there's the link. You can click on it right there. You can find the My Digital Portfolio. When you open it up, you'll have the chance to remix this book if you want to, or you could just go through the pages for inspiration and then have kids make something that follows a similar format with this idea of a digital portfolio you'll revisit over the year. So that's number one on our list. Number two is to share a favorite place. And you might also use a remixable template to do this too. So in the remixable books area, if you scroll down and explore, you might have already found the travel guide. Of course, you could do a share a favorite place from scratch. This is one of my favorite activities to do in a professional development setting. So if you were with me in Texas this summer or in, I want to say I did this also with a group of educators in Virginia. Virginia in July. So if you've been with me this summer, this is one of my favorite activities. You of course could start from scratch, which I'll show you in a moment, or you could have students make their own by remixing this book. They'll click on it. They'll make some changes to make it their own favorite place. So if you want to see what it looks like to remix a book, this is what the steps are. You'll open it up from this page of remixable books. You'll click the remix button. It'll ask you, where do you want to save it? And I'm just going to put it in the my books part of my library. My library's got a lot going on inside of it. And then I can click to go to library and you'll see that this one is waiting for me, just loading up here. So I'm going to go ahead and click and open up this book um, so that we can get inside. Um, I'm going to go to the edit mode. And once I am in here, I can go ahead and click on any of these elements. They're locked down to get started, but then I can go to the inspector button. I can unlock it and I might change this to not just say travel guide, but I might say Monica's travel guide or travel guide to my favorite place. Hit done. And now this text is a little big, so I can hit the inspector button. And I can make it a little bit smaller so that it fits on the page. I can drag it. There we go. I could even change the color if I wanted to. And I can keep going through and changing up the elements. You could go page by page when you're remixing a book, or you could click on the pages button at the top. This will give you all of the things at a glance. And you could say, you know what? We are not going to do top six interactions. We're just going to focus on three. So maybe delete a couple of these pages, right? So you could really make this your own with your group of students. No wrong or right way to go about it. I love a travel guide at the beginning of the year because kids can talk about a favorite place. They don't even have to have been there. It could be a place that they've read about or saw in a movie, and then they can make it based on that too. The next one we're going to look at also has a great, um, a great option for a remixable book, but we're going to take a spin on this and start from scratch together. So this will be an interactive activity that I'm hoping you'll want to try out with me today. So I love an all about me project. I just had a post on my blog earlier this week about like first day of school, first week of school activities. And this is always one that I come back to. I'll also tell you that I do um, not as much the past two years just with the pandemic, but in the past, I did a lot of school visits where I would visit a school and I wouldn't know any of the kids in the classroom, but I'd be there to help their teachers think about using technology. So when I would go in without knowing any of the kids or really having you know, played around with any of their devices just yet, you know, I would introduce that tool that their teacher wanted them to use for a big project using an all about me journal or an all about me book. Now you can find this on the remixable page. So it's right here. You can click and use this one, or you can do what I'm hoping you'll do with me today, which is to start from scratch and make a quick all about me book, maybe just a page or two. So you can get a feel for what it's like to onboard students and bring them in in the beginning of the year. So I'm here in my book creator library. Um, I can go ahead and use one of the libraries I've already created. Or for today, I'm going to go ahead and create a new library. I'm going to say this is our All About Me demo, and I'm going to put in 822 for August 22, August um, of 2022, and I'm going to invite you in. Now, with the free version of Book Creator, you just have your one library. I've got the bigger version, so I can bring all of us in together today. So once you're inside, I'm going to let you search for images. I'm going to let you... Um, edit your own book. And you can decide, you might not want kids to read each other's All About Me book at first. You might want to do a big reveal at the end. For today, I'm going to let you see each other's books and I'm going to turn off collaboration. 
And just because I want this to be kind of an all about you project, there's definitely room for collaboration. And we'll talk about that a bit later. So I'm going to hit create library. And in a moment, I'm going to invite you into this library. So there's no books in here just yet. I can go to new book. I might make my all about me book a comic. I might use one of the awesome templates in here. We're going to do a whole webinar on templates next Thursday, um, but we, I'm going to just use a blank book for us for today. So once I'm inside of here, I'm going to go to my plus button. And this is where I can truly make this book all about me, right? All about my favorite things. So I might search for images and I might put something like flowers or books or favorite food, right? I could do anything that I wanted here. I'm going to put New York City here. You can see that these pictures, when I click on them, they're Creative Commons licensed um, for reuse with modifications. So they come from Pixabay. I'm going to hit add and put this in the background. I don't live in New York City right now, um, but uh, it's a favorite place and I taught there for a long time. So I can go ahead and um, move this over here. Then I'm going to go to the plus sign up here at the top and I can go ahead and choose from text or pen, or I could even take a selfie if I wanted to, but I'm just going to type in text and I'm going to say all about me hit done. Now this isn't very exciting text, but when it's clicked, so I've got blue around it, I can go to the inspector button. I can make it larger. I can change up the font if I wanted it to look a certain way. I can change the color and I can even put a background if I want it to really pop. So totally up to you, right? This is your all about um, books so that you can um, go ahead and move this around. Um, let me see here. I just want to make sure that you can see my screen. Um, if you are joining here on the Zoom, I think that when we're in full screen mode, um, because I'm sharing out my screen, let me just see. I just saw a note in the chat there about moving uh, if that my box is blocking it. But let's see. Here, let me know if you're having trouble seeing me choose different choices. Okay. Um, yeah, perfect. I think we're good, Monica, because okay, I can move good. you around. So, yep, all set. Awesome. Good. I know I move all my my little Zoom boxes around, so the chat moves and all the things move. So I want to make sure you're all good here. So I can press all the buttons. I can record my voice. I can add shapes. I can even um, use some of the app integrations if I want to, but I would love for you to make a page or two right here inside of Book Creator. Um, that way you get a feel for it. So this is what we're going to do. I'm going to give you an invite code so you can join my library. And I'm going to send this out into the chat. So even though I'm going to switch my screens, you should see it there in the chat in a moment. What you are going to do is you are going to go to app.bookcreator.com. You're going to see a yellow screen when you are here in the sign in mode. And I'm going to go ahead and um, do a new share here so you can see what your screen should look like. So you'll see this yellow screen. You're going to go to switch to teacher so that you are signing in as a teacher. You can choose any way you want to sign in. And this is totally optional for today. I just want to give you a chance to play around while we're all together, make an all about me book. And you might even show this book to your kids as a kickoff for their own project. If you choose this as our, one of our list of nine. So once you're inside of here, you're going to open up your library. So I'll show you what this looks like here again. So you're going to go um, to your library. And you'll scroll all the way to the bottom where it says join a library. And that's where you'll put in that HJ um, code. So once you do that, it'll let you join into my library. It looks like there's some authors in there already. So just to show you that again, you will sign in using that app.bookcreator.com link that I just put in the chat. Once you're inside, you'll scroll to the very bottom where it says join a library and you will put in that H, the code that starts with the letter H there. And once you're in, you can click new book and make a book in here. So for the all about me project, I just kept it kind of simple. I could go ahead and change my backgrounds if I wanted it to look a certain way. I'll keep with the blue theme there. I could go to the plus sign and record my voice. I could draw something. We're kind of scratching the surface here with all the things you can do, but I want to give you a chance to play around a bit. 
So number three is an all about me project. You could use the all about me journal, the remixable template. Um, that is the one that I pointed out in the remixable books area right down here, or you could start from scratch and create your own. So feel free to play along, um, maybe add some different things to your page. If you have questions, this is a great time to ask your questions and I'm going to keep us moving through our list, but I'll keep taking a peek back um, and showing you a few more things to add in as we move through today. So number three was the get to know you, right? An all about me journal. Number four allows you to capture vocab or set up a vocabulary notebook. So if you want to set up a vocabulary notebook, you can start from scratch, just like we did for the all about me book, or you might head back over to the remixable books. I'll drop this link into the chat one more time, and you'll be able to find the vocabulary notebook. I love this as a back to school activity because you're setting up a notebook that you would then add to and add to. So it's also building in some routines. Now, a vocabulary notebook doesn't just have to be in an ELA classroom. You could set one up for math or social studies or science totally up to you. So I saw a couple questions come into the chat there. So we're going to talk about students joining a collaborative book in just a moment. That's one of the tips in our second half of the list of nine. But when you're adding kids to a library, they would follow the same sort of process. Their interface would look just a little bit cleaner, right? Not all those books at the top like your library, um, but they would be able to join in using the code just like you used a code to join in. So great question. So number four is a vocabulary notebook, and you can set this up to capture vocabulary right at the start of the school year. Number five on our list is a goal setting book. And if you haven't seen the awesome integration with Canva and Book Creator, you are definitely going to want to check it out. And I put a little um, link in the chat there in case you want to learn a bit more. So this is a great way to create a um, a cover for your book, or even create pages inside of your book too. So for a goal setting journal, you might decide to have kids create a cover on the first few days of school. And then every month they can put in a new goal that they have, and they can put in their progress towards that goal. If it is a big all year type of thing. So I'm going to come back out here. And even though this is our all about me, area and I see some great ones already here. I'm going to make a goal setting journal just to show you what it looks like um, to create your own cover. So I'm going to go to new book. I'm going to choose that landscape again. I just like to have the biggest one possible to demo and I'm going to go to the plus sign and I'm going to go to more. And this is where the Canva integration is. So if I'm making a goal setting journal and I'm going to use this all year long, I really want to have a great cover of this book that I really love. And if you've used Canva before, you know that educators can use Canva and all the pro features totally for free and book creator and Canva talk to one another. So you don't actually have to open up a new window and your kids can use it too. So if I'm looking for a great cover, there's a whole bunch of ones that they give me as templates, as options here. So I might go ahead and choose this one with all of the monsters on it. <laughs> if I really love this and want it to be a little bit silly to make a cover for my goal setting. Now I might not want all these extra monsters so I might delete some of these elements on the page. Maybe I just want the green monster and I'm going to make it a little bit bigger here, add it here. And then I might down here say Monica's goal setting journal. And if you've used Canva before, or if you've used Book Creator and moved the elements around, you know that I can move this into a different position. Maybe I want it to be a little bit bigger. I kind of like this font here um, and they chose it because it looks good, right? But of course I could change it up if I wanted to or change the coloring. Now I might get rid of these extra pieces here or down here I might put something like 2022, let's do 2022 to 2023 school year. And of course I can do all the things I love in Canva, like select different things, make them a little bit bigger and snap them into place. So you can have kids make their own uh, cover for a goal setting journal. 
I'm going to add this to my book and how fantastic does this look now? Right? So I've got a really beautiful cover in the background. And of course I could add extra things on top of it. Like I could record my voice or add in an extra shape if I wanted to. So a lot of different options. So once you, um, are using the app inside of book creator. So if you have a blank page, you go to the plus sign and more I've um, added apps to our library here. So I believe you should see it as you're a student in my library, but you'd have to go to add apps to get this set up for your cover. And it'll automatically plop that cover right on your page. Yeah, definitely a super one, one of my absolute favorites. So number five on the list is to set goals and to create a goal setting journal that you can build a routine around that you can revisit over the course of the year. So before we jump into number six, seven, eight, and nine, I'm going to go back to our library here and see some of the things that you are working on. So I put this goal setting one here, but I see that you've got some all about me journals. Some of you use the great remixable template um, that's available in book creator. Some of you have added your covers to your page or uploaded different emojis, right? Or um, your own emoji there. Love all of these things that we're seeing so far. If you've made a great one and you want to make sure that you have it and saved to your library, once you're finished today, you can hit the button down here at the bottom and move it to your own library. That way you'll have it saved and all of that too. So let's jump back over to a number six on the list. Number six is to work together. And I saw some of you already asked questions about collaboration, uh, which is a favorite aspect of Book Creator. It is a paid feature. So if you want students to work on the same book together, you might decide that you're going to kick off the school year with a collaborative project. If you're thinking, Monica, I don't know if my kids are going to be ready on day one, two, or 10 to be in the same book together. I totally understand. You might have students pair up as opposed to having five kids in a group together and help build some of these digital citizenship skills with them. So let me show you how this looks. So this is my goal setting journal, and maybe I want some help with this goal setting journal. I want to have a classmate add feedback, right? Or I want someone else to jump in with me. As a teacher, you would enable collaboration and I can say now, okay, everyone in this library can add to my book and I can start collaboration. Or I can say, you know what, just John and I are going to work on this book together and then I'm going to add him as a collaborator. So you have some options here to start the collaboration on a book together. If you want to do a book where you have everyone make one page, maybe they make one page about their favorite movie from the summertime, you could create a book and invite everyone in, or you might have each kid make one page themselves, and then you can stitch them together by going down here to the bottom and combining books and choosing one page from each book. So working together can take a few different forms. If you want to collaborate and see what that looks like, I'll make a new book. I'm going to make this one a square so you'll be able to find it a little bit easier. I'm going to go and show you that Canva integration one more time. So plus more Canva to make a cover. And then I'm going to choose a cover and I'm going to make it our own for today. Let's go for this summary one. And I'm going to say that this is going to be our favorite summer books, movies, or podcasts. And this is really big. So I'm going to want to make this a lot smaller, maybe not that small, but have it like this. So I'm going to get rid of the extra the on the page. We'll go here. So I'll move this around. We'll get rid of this one. We'll get rid of these extras for us for today. So for this book, I'm going to invite you in and I'm going to let you make your own page and you can tell us a favorite summer book, movie, or podcast, or something else that you've consumed this summer. So this is going to be the cover of the book. I'm going to go here and make a new page. And here I might put a structure for you. So I might put in text and I might give you a sentence starter, like my favorite summer. And then you can fill in the blank of what it is that you read or watched or viewed. I might make this text a little bit bigger for us. 
maybe have it really stand out. I might use some of the accessibility features like open dyslexic font. And then here's where you could decide that you wanna respond with text or recording, or maybe even jump on camera. So what I'm gonna do up here, this is where I access my pages. I'm gonna go ahead and make a whole bunch of copies of this too. So you could go ahead and do this and copy so that you can make a whole bunch. Of course, you don't have to use my prompt page here. Uh, you could decide that you want to um, add your own page or have it look a little different. This is just to get us started. So now I'm gonna go back here. I'm gonna go to the share button at the bottom, collaborate, and I'm gonna turn this on for everyone in the library. Now, we've got a bunch of people on the webinar today. Um, I think we're in the circle of book creator trust here, right, in terms of our digital citizenship. I'm not super worried about us, but you might find that this is a bit much for the first week of school. You might do this as a back to school month activity, right? Or something, you might even bring this into your staff. I know um, I just saw Jamie mention about um, doing a staff, right? Introducing it too. So if they um, sign in and they make a book with you all, kind of like how we're doing today, Jamie, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to have them move their book to their library if they're going to use it in like a student capacity or student example. So in this collaborative book, when I open it up, I can click to the pages and I can see if anyone is in here. Someone's already customizing this one. I can click pages at the top and I can see that someone's working on these different pages. So this is a great option. Number six on the list is to work together. Great way to introduce some collaborative experiences for your students. Now, number seven on the list is going to be research and interest. And this is where you might try out some of the templates inside of Book Creator. As I mentioned, next Thursday, we're doing a whole webinar just about themes and templates. But if you wanted to explore them today, you might decide to use a template for a research project. Now, I love this because it gives kids the beginning of the year a low stakes, no wrong answers, right? Like what's something you're interested in learning more about? Let's go out and do some research on polar bears or research on climate change or whatever it is that they want to learn a little bit more about. So you can decide how you would set this up. You might have kids use a blank canvas and give them a checklist and say, make sure to record your voice, make sure to add emojis, make sure to do this, right? And you might start it out that way, or you might decide to use a template for them. Just to remind you where to find templates, when I come back here and I go to make a new book, templates are right up here at the top for a research a topic that you're interested in. You might have them do a magazine, a photo book, a newspaper, or you might even decide to use one of the themes. So a lot of different options there. Number eight is to share a passion. Sharing a passion or something that you're excited about, that you want other people to know about. You might have a fourth grader that loves a particular video game. You might have an eighth grader that spent all summer cooking with their grandma and they want to share some of their favorite recipes, right? So you might have a passion that you want your students to talk about, something that they love, and they can, of course, share it here in Book Creator, create a book. It ends up being a great way for them to get to navigate the tool, be creative, but also share a little bit about themselves, not only with you, but also with their classmates. So a lot of different options here for getting kids in and talking about what they're doing. So before we get to number nine, remember, you can jump into the chat. You can share any questions that you have, any ideas that you have. I want to jump back over here to our library so you can see what everyone's been working on. So if you notice that this has a little bit of a different icon at the top, this is because collaborate mode is on. I can see everyone's books by going through this way and scrolling or I can hit the four dots at the top and get kind of like a bookshelf of everything that everyone is working on here. I can reorder them if I wanted to, especially if I wanted to spotlight a few at the top, or if I wanted to make it easy for you to find some of the collaboration ones, I could move them around. Now I'm going to jump in here and go look at our pages. Some of you are sharing your favorite summer food. I love it. Right. And I see some other ones here. So as I scroll through, you can see um, some of the different things. Oh my gosh, Martha, I am with you. 
nothing. I think this is like my top summer consumption of the thing that I watched or viewed, right? Nothing top that for me either. So you can see here some different activities using different GIFs. I love it. I'm just so excited to see all of this. And yeah, you can do all sorts of things, add different shapes to the pages, lots and lots of things. These are just some of our placeholder ones, but a lot of different options here within Book Creator for all of these pieces. So before I get to number nine on the list, I want us to jump back to a few, just jump back a few so that you, you can go through our list one more time because number nine kind of ties it all up together. So we talked about our remixable books. I shared that link for you so that you can find all of these ones. This is a great place to start in the back to school season. We talked about setting up a portfolio, which is great to do the first few weeks of school because then kids can revisit adding some of their great work at the end of each month. Wonderful routine, whether you start from scratch or use a remixable book. A travel guide is a great way for kids to show a favorite place. They never have to have been there before. It could be a place they want to visit too. And then of course, you might do that all about me like we did together. You could use the remixable template or you could start totally from scratch just like we did. So totally up to you how you might go about that. You might kick off the year with a vocabulary notebook great in different content areas where you have a lot of domain specific vocabulary. So if you have um, something where you want to have kids really capture all their different vocab in one place, you could do that. You might start the year with a goal setting project. This is where our Canva, the Canva integration, the one that we all did together, our covers, right, can really shine here. Or you might decide that you want to bring in a collaborative project, just like we made a book where everyone took a page and did their favorite things. Now, of course, you might have kids research something they want to learn more about. This can act also as a form of formative assessment for you to figure out where you might want to um, place some energy with different examples this year. Or you might decide to have kids share a passion, and they, of course, could use the templates or the themes for each of these. So before we jump into our Q&A, number nine on our list is to host a celebration. And this is perfect way at the beginning of the school year to really celebrate students' creativity, students' effort, their enthusiasm, all the things that they make the first week of school um, using a tool like Book Creator. So to host a celebration, you might do what we did today, which is I went here into the library. I created this view, right? This bookshelf view. You might reorder some of these books so that you could spotlight a few here at the top um, to make sure everyone's getting some attention or energy there. You might decide that you are going to change the settings. So for your celebration, you might have originally said kids couldn't read each other's books, but then you turn it on so that they can see each other's books. And you might for your celebration decide that every student has two comment buddies. That means two people that they have to comment on their work and share something that they loved. This could be a face-to-face -face comment, like go find those two people and tell them how much you loved their book, or it might be something that you do in a digital space too. So lots of things that you can do in Book Creator to help get ready at this back to school season. If you haven't checked it out just yet, there's a blog post I put together together uh, for Book Creator and the folks at TCEA. I just put the link there in the chat where you can get some more resources and learn a little bit more about all the things happening in the back to school season. So a big thank you for jumping in and trying all these things out with me today. I put my info up here on the screen so that you can follow along with me on social media. You can tag me in any of the great things that you're creating. And then of course, you can follow along with the folks at Book creator so that they know what you are up to as well. So I would love to turn it over to any questions that you have, anything that people want to see me show off in action during our last uh, five minutes or so together here. Monica, thank you so much. Uh, there was one question that uh, I, I tried to answer in the chat window, but I want to make sure that I just kind of reiterate this. If you are training teachers on Book Creator uh, and you're trying to get them to join your libraries, basic rule of thumb, teachers are always teachers. doesn't matter if they are joining a library for you in a training or not. I always ask teachers to sign in as teachers. 
if they accidentally sign in as a student, they can always sign out and sign back in to, as a teacher and it will kind of convert their account. Um, but like I said, basic rule of thumb, it's always easier from the start if they just sign in as teachers. So please make sure you try to do that. Um, that was really the only question that I hadn't answered or hadn't seen an answer to. Um, there was one that just flew past. Do you have any ideas um, with Adobe Express and book creators? So I haven't used, personally, I haven't used Adobe Express. Um, so I'm not even 100% sure what it is, but I know that like yeah. Adobe, um, some of the Adobe stuff, uh, we certainly, you can download videos and images mm -hmm. and put those straight into book creator. Absolutely. Yeah. And I can share what that looks like. And just to respond to that question that you had shared, John, too, um, you might have seen me do it when I brought you into the library, the way I normally talk teachers through it. And this is in live trainings. I just did this with a group of teachers um, outside of Austin a couple of weeks ago is all bring them to the regular sign-in page, right? Then I'll say the yellow one is for kids. And then I'll try and give them those signals to say, just like I did for you, hit switch to teacher. You should see blue. You should see the owl. Like I try and give those reminders to them just to help make sure they're in the right place um, and just kind of cue them that way. And I find that that usually helps people um, kind of just see the difference and understand that, you know, coming in as a teacher will give them that the view I want them to have during a training, which I'm sure is similar to you too. So to show you the Adobe Express connection, now Adobe Express is, used to be called Adobe Spark. So if you use Adobe Spark with Book Creator in the past, yeah, they just changed their name. So um, for like the new school year, basically, right? So if you are familiar with Spark and Spark mm -hmm. and Book Creator integration, same thing happening. So if you, and I've done some work with their team too, and, and love all the things you can do. And I especially love when I have two favorites that can come together, right? So if I go here to this page and I go to the plus sign, um, you could um, bring in a picture. So where it says upload from your computer, if you made a collage in Express, you could upload it here. If you go to more, um, and I want to say files or embed. Yeah. So either of these would be your other two, like say you saved a movie in express, or it used to be called spark video, then you could upload the file or an embed. You'll see here. That's actually the Adobe express, um, their, their new logo. So book creators already just, you know, switched it over here. So you can actually pull in the iframe code, um, too. So that's definitely an option. Great. Thank you, Monica. Uh, question from Martha. Uh, um, and this is, it's a good question. Uh, <clears throat> can you insert a tab uh, into a notebook so that there can be a separation between like a science part of a notebook and a language part of a notebook? So um, Monica, if you want to kind of demonstrate this for me, this would be great as I kind of talk through it. So if you go mm -hmm. back to my books, Monica, one of my favorites uh, for notebooks is if you click new book and go to templates, uh, one of my favorites is the notebook template. Uh, and so what I love about this is it kind of reminds me of like that digital trapper keeper. Uh, like I'm a little bit <laughs> That's not a word you hear every day, but I feel you, right? <laughs> so if, if you click the arrow there, Monica, um, yeah. until we add a new page, one of the page styles um, is a, uh, it kind of looks like a trapper keeper. So if you click the plus button, there you go, section title. So green, there's pink down there. There's the yellow one. Obviously you can change the colors um, if you want to. But what I would do is I would create, um, the, have the kids create the notebook and add the different sections, right? Like this. So if they created, uh, Monica, if you could just click on that yeah. green one for me, that'd be great. Yeah. So I'm gonna create a, a, a section title and, and this is my math notebook, right? Or this is my whatever notebook I wanna keep it in. Um, what's really cool is that I would then have my students create a table of contents. And in that table of contents, I might put math, um, uh, reading, science and social studies, whatever. And when you go to the table of contents and you, you can actually link the words from one page to a specific page. So for example, if I put in math here and um, I highlight it and then click the link button, I'm gonna choose the page of the notebook that that page is on and click save. And then when they go to the page in the, um, uh, sorry, in the table of contents, from read mode and click on it, it takes them right to that page. So they click on math, it takes them to the math section. All right. And so this is a really cool way to um, 
you know, to really uh, like play around with this, right? Uh, so, because it's a double spread, yeah. it was you know, six. Um, but this is a really awesome way to do these digital notebooks and keep tabs, right? In the in the traditional sense. And in my 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 other favorite hack for that one too is on the page on every page, I might put a little icon of a house and link the house back to the table of contents. So if they're in the math section and they want to get to language arts, they can click the house. And then it would take them back. All right. So, oh no, Monica, the fly I'm flew sorry. by. Yeah, I'm like my allergies. It's that time of the afternoon where it just takes a second. But yeah, there we go. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, and then so right now, Jamie, is there a way to click on a page hyperlinks in edit mode? There is not. That is something that we have uh, mentioned to uh, engineering, and it's something that we're looking into adding in the future. But right at this time, uh, unfortunately, there is not. Um, and can this be assigned in Google Classroom? That's another uh, great um, question that we get. Uh, so the answer is yes, but not maybe not in the way that you're thinking. Um, so we don't have a direct integration with Google Classroom, but a lot of times what teachers will do is they'll just make an assignment in Google Classroom that says, go to Book Creator, join this library, and make a book based on X criteria. And when you're done, come back into Google Classroom and mark your assignment is finished. And then uh, the teacher then knows to go into the library and take a look at the work. But we don't have a direct link to Google Classroom per se right this minute. Uh, again, something that we're looking into uh, in the future. All right, I think that's, I think that's all the questions, Monica. Yeah. Uh, well, a big thank you to everyone, not just for being here today, but also for making books with us, right? And creating books. So don't forget, if you love your book, maybe you made an all about me and you're going to use it as an example for your kiddos um, when you're here in the library. Don't forget to go ahead and move that book so that it goes into your library or one that you want your kids to be able to see as an example. Um, just so many things that you can do for back to school. There's those blue links in the Zoom chat there that I placed in. Feel free to click on those, open up new windows or send me or the book creator team a message if there's anything you're looking for as you're getting ready for back to school. All right. Well, thanks everybody for being here, Monica. Thank you so much for the wonderful presentation. Uh, have a great day, everyone, and uh, be safe out there. Happy bookmaking. Yeah. Bye.